I want to do something a little weird today and honor a white man during Black History Month. His name is James Gillespie Burney. And why would I do that? Because I know that there are those out there that say slaves did everything, but honestly, they didn't do much without white partners. And some that did incredible things on their behalf, this guy would lead the pack. Now, he was born into a well-to-do family during Black History Month, February 1792. Went to Princeton, got his law degree, and was a, a successful lawyer pretty much throughout his life. He, early in his practice, he moved to Kentucky with, as he grew his family and then wanted to get rich. And in that day, what do you do? You buy a cotton plantation down in Alabama. So he did that with slaves. So he was a slave owner. Now, he began even then working on behalf of slaves and their rights. One thing he championed was any time a slave was charged with a crime, they should have the right to a public defender, which was completely unheard of in that day. Many other things, too. He had a problem, though, not with the slaves, but in his own heart, he was a gambler and a bad one at that. He lost a ton of money, decided to sell the plantation with most of the slaves, moved his family to Huntsville, Alabama, and very quickly became the number one attorney in Alabama, was elected to the House of Representatives from Alabama, uh, but through this process really came to the place where he believed in abolition, which meant not just that the slaves should be freed, but that they were equal under the law, which again, no one, even the whites in the North, believed that. It's funny because he had one slave that he, he owned through this process. His name was Michael, his personal assistant. He eventually gave Michael his freedom, and Michael said, can I stay? had a wife and kids, and so he was an employee for Bernie. I think that says as much about him as anything. His progress kind of went like this. He first joined the American Colonization Society, which was a group of mainly wealthy white people. They bought land in Africa. It's called Liberia. You've probably heard of it. And the thought was, we'll free slaves by buying their freedom and then send them to Liberia, because most people did not believe in equal rights for the blacks. That's why he left that society. And he joined another one called the Anti-Slavery Society. But then he left that one because he discovered that they did not believe in equal rights for women. Talking about a guy ahead of his time. Man. So then he just started doing the stuff on his own. He wrote stuff. He was an excellent speaker and would go anywhere people would listen to his abolitionist message. He started a newspaper in Cincinnati, Ohio. 1836 called The Philanthropist. Weekly, he sent out the message of abolition and equal rights for blacks. He started a political party called the Liberty Party, ran for president twice, 1840, 1844, never garnered more than 2% of the vote, which tells you all you need to know about how big slavery was as an issue for politics in that day. That's why his work was so incredible. Sad for me, he died in 1857. He never saw the Emancipation Proclamation, never saw the 13th and 14th Amendments passed, never saw when blacks were truly freed from slavery and given equal rights under the law. What a great guy, though, and deserves to be honored. James Gillespie Burney.